Murley was dead, no doubt about it. The register of his burial was signed by the clergyman, the clerk, the undertaker, and the sole mourner, Ebenezer Scrooge. Yes, Marley was as dead as a doornail. And though Scrooge knew Marley was dead, uh, they used to be partners, Scrooge never painted out old Marley's name. No, there the sign remained, Scrooge and Marley above the door. Oh, Scrooge was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone, a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. The cold within him froze his old features, nipped his pointed nose, shriveled his cheek, stiffened his gait. He carried his own low temperature about with him, and it didn't thaw even one degree at Christmas. Now, once upon a time, of all the good days in the year, on one particular Christmas Eve, old Scrooge sat busy in his dark and dingy counting house, keeping an eye upon his clerk, who in the corner was copying letters. Bob Cratchit. Uh, yes, Mr. Scrooge. Tell those people outside to stop their wailing. But, sir, it's uh, custom. The holiday and all. It's humbug, I say. They're only children, sir. They sound like mice squealing over a piece of cheese. Why don't they take their holiday and go home and leave me in peace? Cratchit! Well, uh, sir... Oh, I'll tell them myself. Go away! Glory Go home and take your screeching with you. Sorry, sir. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. Christmas humbug. That's what it is. <coughs> sorry, indeed. If they come around again, I will make them sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, all right, now, Cratchit, don't forget to complete today's letters. Yes, sir. And there is the matter of Beaton. Oh, poor Mr. Beaton. Surely you don't want to collect on Christmas Eve, sir. Beaton's had his share of troubles. What do I care for his troubles? Or for Christmas Eve, for that matter, if I hear that word one more time. Yes, sir. Oh, what can it be now? A Merry Christmas, Uncle. A Merry Christmas, Mr. Cratchit. A Merry Christmas to you, Fred. Bah, humbug. Christmas? A humbug? Uncle, surely you don't mean that. I surely do. And what is it you want from me? Nothing at all, Uncle. I want nothing but to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. What right have you to be merry? What reason have you to be merry? You are poor enough. Oh, come then, Uncle. What right have you to be so dismal? You're rich enough. Humbug. <laughs> Don't be cross, Uncle. What else can I be? when I live in a world of fools. Merry Christmas. What is Christmas time to you, nephew, but a time for paying bills without money? A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer. Why, if I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Uncle! Nephew. You keep Christmas in your own way, and let me keep it in mine. <laughs> but you don't keep it. Let me leave it alone, then. Much good it has ever done you. Oh, I think there are many things from which I've derived some good, by which I have not profited financially, I dare say. There's more in life than money, Uncle. Oh, humbug to that. <laughs> more in life than money. Humbug. And I've always thought of Christmas time as a good time, a kind, forgiving, and charitable time, when men and women seem to open their shut-up hearts freely and think of people not as fortunate in life as their equals, for they very well are equals. We're all one and the same. 
And therefore, Uncle, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe Christmas has done me good and will do me good. And I say God bless it. Well put, Fred. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, dear Bob. Let me hear another words from you, Cratchit, and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. And you... Dear nephew, you are quite a speaker. Why, I wonder why you don't go into Parliament. Oh, don't be so angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. Why would I ever do that? Good afternoon to you. Well, I'll keep my Christmas spirit to the last. Good afternoon. And so I wish you a Merry Christmas, Uncle. I do. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. And a Merry Christmas to you, Bob, and Mrs. Cratchit, and your whole family. How is your little boy, the one whose illness has... Oh, you mean Tiny Tim. Well, well we pray he's getting better. Uh, many thanks to you, Fred, for asking. And a Merry Christmas to you. A very good day to you, sir. Humbug. <laughs> and you, Bob Cratchit, what, what, what are you doing over there? I was just putting a small coal on the fire, sir. My hands are a bit numb from the cold. You will do nothing of the kind. There are many who would like your situation and have no complaints, cold or otherwise. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Scrooge. It's just my fingers you know, are... Put on some mittens or gloves if need be. This is a business, you know, and... Oh, see who it is, Cratchit. Yes, sir. No. Yeah. There's a gentleman to see you, sir. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or, or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead for seven years. Oh. He died seven years ago this very night. Well then, Mr. Scrooge. It is I. Uh, at this time of year, it is quite fitting to find the means to help the poor and the destitute among us who suffer greatly. And many thousands are in want of common needs and common comforts. And mm, are there no prisons? Well, uh, <laughs> there are plenty of prisons, sir. Too many are occupied from these times of desperation. And workhouses, are there not places that accommodate the lowest rung of society's ladder? Well, I wish we could say that we would help these people reach a higher rung, Mr. Scrooge. Are there not laws and means to which those you speak about are aided? Yes, but I... Glad to hear it. But still, mm -hmm. there are those who are in such dreadful states that Christmas is but a pinch <clears throat> of salt to the wounds of life, sir. And we'd like, in the spirit of such a day, to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat for those who don't have and to give some cheer to those who are in such need. So shall I put you down for... Nothing. Oh, yeah, you mean I, you wish to be anonymous, I suppose. <laughs> but, uh, I wish to be left alone. I do not make merry at Christmas, and I cannot afford to make idle people merry. I help support those establishments, those shelters, to house the poor by staying in business and paying my taxes, dear sir. And, and many would rather die than end up in such places such as they are. Well, it is not my business. And if they had rather die, well, then my advice is for them to go and do it. Decrease the surplus population. Why should I believe that there are people in such dire straits? It is not my business to know. There are such people, Mr. Scrooge, and it is your business to know. It's everyone's business. It is not my business. It is enough for a man to understand his own business, and mine occupies me constantly. Good afternoon. Cratchit, let the gentleman out. Yes, sir. Excuse me, kind sir. I know it isn't much, but maybe it will help. Here, I'd like to contribute. Cratchit! You're a very... Coming, sir! You're a very generous soul, Cratchit. Very generous. Cratchit. Yes, Mr. Scrooge. It is too late this evening to deal with beaten... Yes, sir. Mm. And I suppose you will want all day tomorrow off? If it's quite convenient, sir. It is not convenient. And I suppose if I took it out of your wages, you would think yourself ill-used? Well, sir, seeing the holiday is only once a year, but still, if you must... Oh, you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's pay for no work? True enough, sir. It is a poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. 
Well, if you must, you must, but be here all the earlier the next morning. Oh, I will, sir. Mm. The family will be so pleased about tomorrow, that is. Thank you indeed. Humbug. Good evening, Mrs. Scrooge, and Merry Christmas to you. Humbug. I can make it home soon enough. Yes, I can. Now, Scrooge, having finished his business for the day, took his melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern, and having read all the newspapers and given a final perusal of his banker's book, he went finally home to bed. Scrooge lived in the house once owned by his deceased partner, Marley, gloomy, dismal. The house was at the end of an alleyway, so dark even Scrooge had to grope with his hands to make his way. The fog lay heavy and low. Scrooge stood outside his door as he searched his pockets for his key. Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge. What? Who is it? Who, who is playing such tricks? It's all humbug. That's what it is. It's this, this, this awful weather. Humbug. Humbug. Scrooge entered his home and went straight up. Through the sitting room, bedroom, living room. All were as they should be. Nobody under the table. Nobody under the sofa. Scrooge knew. Because he looked. Who is it? Who is there? Oh, it's, it's just the wind. It's just the wind. Is that you, Mr. Scrooge? <laughs> yes, uh, of course it is me, Mrs. Dilber. Who the devil else might it be? And what, yeah, why were you making those strange sounds? Strange sounds, sir? Are you deaf? Yes, that's what I said. Oh, why do you plague me so, Mrs. Dilber? I have a mind to put you out this instant. Oh! Stop. Stop wailing, Mrs. Dilber. Oh, and think of the cold before you bedevil me like this. Oh, please, sir. Oh. I don't know what you mean, sir. Oh, Joe, just get me my slippers, Mrs. Dilber. And, and, and... Did you hear that, Mrs. Dilber? What, sir? You mean the breeze? No, no. No, woman, not the breeze. Don't, don't tell me that you didn't... Oh, just never mind. Yes, sir. I'll never mind, uh, sir. Uh, I'll get your slippers, sir. No, just go to bed, Mrs. Dilber. Y yes, sir. Mr. Scrooge, good night, sir, and a Merry Christmas to you, oh, sir. You... <laughs> ah, humbug. Good night, Mrs. Dilber. Yeah. Hmm. Finally, some peace. Yeah, this fire will do me good. I'll pull up this chair. Ah, that's better. The cold air has gotten to my lungs, and uh, what's this? A little bell? Who left this here on the table? And look at the dust. Doesn't Mrs. Dilbert do anything around here? She can't even dust a tiny bell. It's, it's, it's ringing itself. How can it? I, those bells. Where are those bells? I, I don't. What is this? Oh, poo! It's, it's humbug. I say there must be a draft somewhere. It's all humbug. That's all it is. Humbug. Still. <laughs> I, I, I won't believe it. I don't. It's, it's just the weather. It's just... 
There's someone in the house. There, the servant is at my door. He's coming closer. Close. Mr. Tilbury! Mr. Tilbury! Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge. No, 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 it isn't. It's Marley? Marley? No. No, of course it isn't. It is all told, oh dear. Scrooge. But, but, but whoever you are, whatever you are, what do you want with me? Much. Who are you? Ask me who I was. Who were you then? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. But you're dead these seven years old. Oh, Jacob, if it is you, can you. can you sit down? I can. You don't believe in me, do you, Ebenezer? I, I, I do not. Why do you doubt your senses? Well, because, because a little thing affects them, a slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheat. Why, why, you may be an undigested bit of beef. <laughs> a, a crumb of cheese, an underdone potato. There is more gravy than grave about you, whatever you are. Yes, a humbug. Yes, yeah, I tell you, a humbug. Do you believe in me now? Oh, yes, I do, I do, I do. I must, I, I must. But mercy, mercy, oh, Jacob. Why do you trouble me? Why come to me? It is required of every man that the spirit within him should walk among his fellow men to travel far and wide and be among people. And if that spirit goes not forth in life, it is condemned to do so after death. I am doomed to wander through the world. Oh, well. Me and witness what I cannot share, but might have shared on earth. Tell me, Jacob, what is that heavy chain you wear? I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. Cash boxes. Keys, padlocks, ledgers. I forged it with my own free will, and of my own free will I wore it. Is its pattern strange to you, Ebenezer? Oh, dear me. Or would you know the weight and length of the strong coil you bear yourself? It was full and heavy seven Christmas Eves ago. You have labored on it since. It is a ponderous chain, Ebenezer. Oh, Jacob, Jacob, speak comfort to me, please, Jacob. I have none to give. I cannot rest. I cannot stay. I cannot linger anywhere. So many journeys lie before me. Seven years dead and traveling all the time. On the wings of the wind. Yeah! No rest, no peace. I am sorry for you, Jacob. I know only the torture of remorse. Why didn't I know? Know what, Jacob? That no amount of regret can make amends for one life's opportunities. Misused. Misused! It such was I. Such was I. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business. Mankind was my business. The common welfare was my business. Charity, mercy, benevolence were all my business. The dealings of my trade should have been but a drop of water in the expansive ocean of my 
business, dear Jacob. Hear me, Ebenezer. My time is nearly gone. I will. Jacob, I will listen, but, but please do not be hard upon me, Jacob. I am here tonight to warn you, Ebenezer, that you have yet a chance and hope of escaping my fate. A chance and hope. You, you were always a good friend to me, Jacob. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is, is, is that the chance and hope you mentioned? It is. Uh, you know, I, 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 I think I'd rather not. <laughs> Without their visits, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. Expect the first, and the bell tolls one. Well couldn't, I, well, couldn't I take them all at once and have it over with, Jacob? Look to see me no more. And look that for your own sake you remember what is past between us. I join all the wandering spirits now, wailing in their eternal binds. This is my fate, Ebenezer. See to it that it is not yours. gone. He is gone out the window and, oh dear, in the fog, hundreds of spirits, all with chains. I see them plain as day. No, 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 stop! Oh, poor Jacob Marley. Scrooge, twisted and stirred in his bed in restless sleep. One. Here, it's, 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 it's one. And now, that light, what is it? I can see it even now through the bed curtains. The curtains were drawn aside by a single hand. And face to face, Scrooge found himself with the unearthly visitor who drew them. It was a strange figure, like a child, yet not so like a child as like an old man. His hair white with age and yet his face not a wrinkle upon it. His arms and hands were of uncommon strength. One hand held a green holly, and through his tunic, though it was white, it was trimmed with the flowers of summer. Scrooge stared at the figure and finally spoke. Are you the spirit foretold to me? I am. And who, what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. What business brings you here, spirit? Your welfare, Ebenezer Scrooge. Rise and walk with me. Oh, but, but not out the window, oh spirit. I, I am mortal and liable to fall. Bear but a touch of my hand and you shall be upheld in more than this. Come, follow me. Do you recognize this place, Ebenezer School? Do I recognize it? I, I was apprenticed here. <laughs> Oh, nice to see you. Why, it's old Fezziwig. No, oh, bless his heart, it's Fezziwig, my old master. He's hosting one of his Christmas parties. And then, oh, there's Dick Wilkins. Dear, Dick, dear, dear. And, and old Fezziwig, there he is, always starting a dance. Clear away, no. my lads. Let's have lots of room here. Fiddler, if you please. Oh, Fezziwig, and oh, oh, look, there's Mrs. Fezziwig. How she works. The roasts and pies and cider, what a time we had. What a time. How happy I was then. A small matter for Fezziwig to make all those silly folks so full of gratitude and joy. Small? Why is it not? He has spent but a few pounds of your mortal money. Is that so much that he deserves praise? It isn't that, spirit. Old Fezziwig's power lay in words and looks in things so slight 
and insignificant that it is impossible to add and count them up. The sheer happiness he gave was quite as if it cost a, f a fortune. What is the matter? It's uh, nothing uh, particular. Something, I believe. No, only I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk, Bob Cratchit, just now, that's all. My time grows short, and we have yet another journey to make. But where? Oh, no. Spirits, spare me this, please. It is a small room, and there sits a young girl. You are there, too. No, spirit, please, not this. You are older now, and already the signs of avarice are upon you. Listen, Ebenezer. It matters little. Uh, but, Bell. To you, it matters very little. For another idol in your heart has displaced me. If it can cheer and comfort you, Ebenezer, I have no cause to grieve. What idol has displaced you, Belle? A golden one. Well, is it better to be poor? It's better to be happy, at the least. You fear the world too much, Ebenezer. All you think about is gain. What then? Th though I've grown wiser in the world, I'm not changed toward you. We were both poor when we made promises to each other. Poor and content to be so until perhaps by our patient industry, we could improve our situation. But now you are changed. When we made our contract, our engagement, you were another man. I was a boy. Have I ever sought release from those promises we made to each other? In words? No, never. In what then? In a changed nature in an altered spirit, in everything that made my love of any worth or value in your sight. If it were now, dear Ebenezer, in this circumstance and your situation, would you seek me out and try to win me now? Would you come and find this poor girl and make promises without regret? I know the answer, I do, and I release you. I know you might have pain in this for a very brief time, and then you will dismiss this as simply an unprofitable dream from which you are glad that you awoke. May you be happy in the life you've chosen. Spirit, show me no more. Carry me home. No more, please, no more. Please, Spirit, I am so tired. I cannot take much more. Just as a simple puff of air could extinguish a candle, so in a whiff was Ebenezer transported back to his bed, where he twisted and turned. Please, spirits, spirit. Scrooge awoke once more. He was glad to find himself in his own bed, until the thought struck him yet another ghostly appearance would soon be upon him. Suddenly, a ruddy light filtered into his room. Scrooge climbed down from his bed to see what was in the next room. He slowly opened the door. It was his sitting room, all right. But what a transformation. The walls and ceiling were hung with living green, holly and ivy and mistletoe. And heaped on the floor to form a kind of throne were turkeys and geese and game and poultry, suckling pigs and sausages, mince pie, plum puddings, chestnuts and, and apples and juicy oranges and cakes of all kinds. It was a feast. A feast upon which a jolly giant sat. Come in, Ebenezer Scrooge. Come in, come in and know me better, my man. Well, who? But who? I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You are a giant. And that light coming from the torch you hold, what manner of torch? It fills the homes of rich and poor alike with its light. 
Ebenezer Scrooge, you've never seen the likes of me before. Oh, never, spirit. You wish to join me? Conduct me where you might. If you have something to teach me, let me profit by it. Touch my robe, Ebenezer Scrooge. We travel far and wide, Ebenezer. To the homes of humble people who hold fast to the tradition of goodwill to all men, even when surrounded by the temptation of bitterness. Behold the sweetness of life growing even out of the desert of poverty and struggle. This place, right here, this home, is this? Yes, a happy dwelling. The home of your clerk, Bob Cratchit. And there's Mrs. Cratchit, dressed as finely as she can muster, helping her daughter Belinda prepare a meal while Master Peter Cratchit checks the potatoes. And over there, the two little Cratchits. Where is your precious father, Belinda? He's with Tiny Tim, Mother. And Martha was never this late. Here's Martha, Mother. Hello, Belinda. Martha, wait till you see the goose for dinner. Martha, bless your heart, my dear Martha. Hello, Mother. I'm sorry I'm so late. There was so much to do at the shop last night. Never mind, so long as you're here. Come, sit by the fire and catch a warm. Oh, Lord bless you. And a Merry Christmas to you. Peter, Martha's here. Yes, Mother. Hello, Martha. Hello, Peter. And look at you, all dressed as the man of the house. And speaking of... Mother, where is Father? He's coming, dear. He's been at church with Tiny Tim. How is Tiny Tim, Mother? Any better? Sometimes I think he is fine and getting better, and then sometimes... Well, I can't bear the thought of anything happening to him. You mustn't think of it then, Mother. Look, Martha, Belinda, Father's coming. He is, Peter. Look, Mother, and Tiny Tim. Oh, <laughs> hello, my dear. Hello, Bob. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you all. Martha, my dear, and Peter, and Belinda. Oh, how you all look so well. Hello, Mother. Tiny Tim, my dearest. Hello, my brother. Martha. Now go wash up, Tim. Yes, Mother. But don't dawdle. I'll be back before you count to ten. <laughs> I'm counting, Tim. One, <laughs> two... And how did Tiny Tim behave, Bob? Uh, as good as gold, my dear, and better. Sometimes... <laughs> yes, sometimes he gets thoughtful to himself and thinks the oddest things. He told me on the way home today that he hoped people saw him in church, him being lame and all, as it might be pleasant to them to remember upon Christmas Day who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Bless his heart. I'm back, and I didn't dawdle. <laughs> Before ten, right, Peter? <laughs> in plenty of time, Tim. Now can we eat, Mother? I'm starving. Yes, oh, yes, yes, well. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at this feast, dear family. You outdid yourself, Mrs. Cratchit. You say that every year, Bob. And every year you managed to outdo the year before. <laughs> well, everyone, as we sit ready to eat on this happy occasion, a Merry Christmas to us all. And for all that we have, God bless us. God bless us. God bless us, everyone. My tiny Tim, spirit. Yes, Scrooge. Tell me. Will Tiny Tim live? I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. No, no, no. Oh, kind spirit, say he will be spared. If these shadows remain unaltered, no one will find him here. No, no spirit. Why? For if he be likely to die, he had better to do it quickly and decrease the surplus population. No, no, the spirit, it cannot be. And now a toast to the founder of the feast, Mr. Scrooge. The founder of the feast, indeed. I wished I'd had him here. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon, and I hope he'd have a good appetite for it. My dear, the children, Christmas Day. It should be Christmas Day, on which one drinks the health of such an odious, stingy, hard, unfeeling man as Mr. Scrooge. You know he is, Robert. Nobody knows it better than you do, poor fellow. My dear, Christmas Day. I'll drink to his health, for your sake and the days, not for his. Long life to him, and a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. He'll be very merry and very happy, I have no doubt. And I say God bless him too, Mother.
There was nothing of a high mark here. There were not a handsome family, the Cratchits. They were not well-dressed. Their shoes were far from being waterproof, their clothes scanty. But they were happy, grateful, and pleased with one another, and contented with the time. And Scrooge looked upon them as such, especially Tiny Tim. It was getting dark and snowing fairly heavily. It was a long evening as the spirit and Scrooge continued on. In all corridors of life, in the bowels of the mines, in the hospitals sheltering the ill, in the prisons, and in all the loneliest places on earth, in these places and more, the Christmas spirit gave his blessing. And in all the misery one can find, and on this earth too much misery dwells, there was always a happy ending with that blessing, a singular comfort. Spirit, you grow old. Yes, Ebenezer Scrooge. Are spirits' lives so short? My life upon this globe is very brief. It ends tonight. Tonight? Tonight, at midnight, and the hour is come. May I ask you, spirit, before you go, Yes. I see something by your feet. What may it be? Is it... What? There's a, a young girl and boy. Look hard upon them, Scrooge. Are they yours? They are man's. See how they cling to me. The boy is ignorance. The girl is want. Beware of them both. But most of all, Beware this boy. Oh, spirit, have they no refuge or resource, no place to be? Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? Spirit. Are there no prisons? No workhouses? Oh, spirit, don't leave. Don't leave me here. Do not leave me here. spirit he's gone and there is another a phantom coming towards me I cannot see his face it is shrouded in black draped and hooded tell me phantom I I am in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come you are about to show me shadows of the things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Isn't that so, spirit? Oh, in your silence, ghost, I, I fear you more than any specter I have seen. But I know your purpose is to do me good. And as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, I will follow you. Lead on, spirit. Lead on. We're at the merchant's building. I know this place. I, I, I know those businessmen over there. I, I think I know them. No, I, I don't know too much about it either way. I only know that he's dead. Uh, when did he die? Uh, last night, I believe. I thought he'd never die. <laughs> what was the matter with him? God knows. What has he done with his money? I haven't heard he left it to his company, perhaps. Well, he hasn't left it to me, that's all I know. And it's likely it's going to be a very cheap funeral, for upon my life, I don't know anybody who's going to go to it. Well, I don't mind going if lunch is provided. <laughs> I'll go, but only if I'm fed. Well, here's to that. A good <laughs> meal indeed. <laughs> Spirit, I do know these men. I have been among them many times, but who are they talking about? Is it someone I know? Spirit. Spirit, wait, wait. Where are you taking me now? Spirit, I have never been to this part of the city. Where are we? These foul streets. And now a pawn shop. It's so dark, I can't make out who is in there. With only one candle, it's so dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see how it is, Joe? A pair of boots and teaspoons, a 
pity for the lot of it is. Eliza brought you plenty enough. No offence to you, Miss Eliza. And even the undertaker has a light load, I must say. No offence to you, uh. sir. <laughs> Spirit. <laughs> I can barely make out their voices. Who? Well, give it up, dear woman. Undo your bundles and let's have a look. All right, now. Take a good gander, if you might. Uh, what do you call this? Bed curtains? Oh, bed curtains indeed, my good man. Pure velvet, Ooh, I might nice. add. You don't mean to say you took them down rings and all with him dead and lying there. And why not? Oh, you were born to make your fortune, woman, and you'll certainly do it. You're all right about that, Joe? And hey! You may look through that shirt you're holding till your eyes ache, but you won't find a hole in it. It's the best he had, and a fine one, too. They'd have wasted it if it hadn't been for me. Wasted it? Putting it on him to be buried in, to be sure. Uh, <laughs> you mean the shirt he was to be buried in this? You took it off him? Somebody was fool enough to put on such a shirt, but I took it off again. Calico is good enough, I'd say. He couldn't look any uglier. Oh, you got that right. <laughs> Spirit, this is too awful. The poor dead man to be so dissected. What kind of life? Well, this is the end of it. He's frightened everyone away from himself when he was alive, only to profit us <laughs> when he was dead. <laughs> oh, Spirit, I see. The case of this unhappy man could be my own if I don't... But wait, where are we now? Are we in his room? It's so dark. I can make out a figure in the bed, but... Oh, spirit, won't you tell me who might this person be if only I could see? Whatever riches this man had can do him no good now. He lays in this dark, empty house with not a man, a woman, or a child to say he was kind in this or that. Only the shadows of an abandoned cat linger, and the scurry of some rats waiting. Spirit, please, I beg you. I am trying to learn from all of this, but I fear I am too old. I haven't the power. I am weak. And this may be all wasted upon me. Take me away from this place. Spirit, may I see some tenderness connected with a death, please, or that darkened room will be forever remembered. <laughs> oh, no. Spirit, why here at Bob Cratchit's house? Why now? Tiny Tim. Poor Tiny Jimmy was only a boy. To be taken so... Oh, our Tiny Tim! Oh, Mother, go sit me by me near the fire. Tiny Tim, ever a burden to anyone, not a soul. Oh, it's Bob. He's at the door. Bob. Good evening, my dear. Hello, Martha, Peter, Belinda. Hello, Hello Father. You're late, Bob. I'm sorry. So sorry, my dear. I went by the churchyard today, where he is resting. I wish you could have gone. It would have done you good to see how green a place it is. But you'll see it often. I promised him that I would walk there on Sundays. My tiny Tim. My little child. My little child, I love him so. Spirit. Oh. Spirit, why must it be so cruel? It, it is too cruel. Take me away. Spirit, we travel toward my home. Perhaps if you showed me who I am in the future, I could... But, but why do you point in that direction? My home is the other way. What lies this way? This, this is a churchyard all overgrown. What could I possibly learn from this deathly place? What could I... Spirit, before I come nearer to that stone to which you now point, please, you must answer me. Are these the shadows of the things that will be? Or are they the shadows of the things that may be? 
only. Oh, oh, spirit, men's courses will foreshadow certain ends. I see that now. But if those courses be departed from, the ends will change. Say it is thus with what you will show me. The engraving on the stone. It reads, Ebony. Ebenezer Scrooge. No, no, that man in death alone, it was me, me, oh, spirit, no, spirit, hear me. I am not the man I was. I will not be the man I must have been. Oh, why show me this if I am past all hope? Just tell me. Please, that I yet may change these shadows you have shown me. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. Just don't tell me that I may sponge away the writing on this stone. Dear spirit, I beg you. I beg you, I will not let go of your cloth, as I promise you, dear spirit, spirit, I promise, I promise you, I, on my knees, I promise, I promise, I, I, what, I, I, what, what is this? This is not, this is not a robe. It's my bed curtains. I'm, I'm in my room, in, in my bed, and the, uh, the curtains, they aren't torn down, they're here. They're so rings and all, they're here. <laughs> I am here, <laughs> and, and the sun, it's, it's coming through the window. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, I am as light as a feather. <laughs> I'm as happy as an angel. <laughs> I am as merry as a schoolboy. I am as giddy as, oh, 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 oh. look, look at that, there's, there's the dusty bell. And, and the door where Jacob Marley's ghost entered, and that's the corner where the ghost of Christmas present sat. It's all right. It's all true. It all happened. Ah. <laughs> I don't know what month it is. <laughs> I don't know how long I have been among the spirits. I don't know anything. <laughs> I'm quite a baby. <laughs> well, never mind. I don't care. I'd rather be a baby. Oh, glorious world. <laughs> oh, listen to that. I'll hear it better out the window, indeed. Oh, oh glorious bells! <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, oh, you, 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 down there, young boy! Me, sir? What is today, my fine fellow? Today? Why, it's Christmas Day, it is. It's, it's, it's Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. Well, why not? They can do anything they like. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course they can. Of course they can. Hello, my fine boy. Do you know the poultry shop in the street around the corner? I do, sir. Oh, intelligent boy. Remarkable boy. <laughs> do you know whether they have sold the prize turkey that was hanging there, the very big one? The one that is big, as big as me, sir. The one as big as me. What a delightful boy. <laughs> yes, my friend. It's hanging there now. Well, go and buy it. Not to you. No, 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 no. no. Go and tell them to bring it here, and I will tell them where to deliver it. Come back with the butcher, and I will give you a piece of silver. Come back in five minutes, and I will make it two. Yes, sir. Uh, I will. Uh, and Merry Christmas to you. Joe, and Merry Christmas to you, my boy. <laughs> yes, yes. I will send it to Bob Cratchit. It's as big as Tiny Tim, I bet. He, he, he won't know where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, this is too delightful. <laughs> oh, 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 I don't deserve to be this happy. <laughs> but I am this happy. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Dilber! Mrs. Dilber! Yes, Mrs. Dilber's yes. coming! Do you know what day it is today, Mrs. Dilber? It's, well, though it can't help itself, sir, it's Christmas Day, it is. <laughs> Can't help itself. You are a poet, you are, Mrs. Dilber. No, don't make fun of me, Mr. Scrooge. Fun. Glorious fun. Wonderful word. Oh, here. Come closer, Mrs. Dilber. Hey, no. Don't look at no. Mr. Scrooge. 
Yes. I won't hurt you, my dear, my dear, my dear Mrs. Dilber. How long have you worked for me? Seven years, sir, give or take, and then some. And in those seven years, all you have done is give, and all I have done is take. Are you feeling all right, Mr. Scrooge? <laughs> I have never felt better in my life. And in all those seven years, Mrs. Dilber, did, did, did I have ever given you a gift? A what? A present? Something to show my appreciation? I ain't ever asked for nothing, Mr. Scrooge. Oh, no, you have not, Mrs. Dilber. No, indeed. So take this, my dear woman. Mr. Scrooge, sir, you must have made a mistake. This is a solid gold coin, sir. Well, I have made mistakes, many mistakes, Mrs. Dilber, and I mean to make up for them one by one. So this is no mistake, my dear, good Mrs. Dilber, no mistake at all, my friend. May I call you that? Call me what, sir? Friend. Well, I'm sure you can, sir. And then some. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then some indeed, Mrs. Dilbert, for we shall make this our Christmas tradition. No, Mr. Scrooge! Now, go and fetch me my finest shirt. I mean to go out into the world today. It is Christmas. Oh, it is, Mr. Scrooge, and a merry one to you. A very merry one. <laughs> merry Christmas. <laughs> merry Christmas to you. Ah, merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I beg your pardon, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, but are you not the gentleman who came into my office yesterday, the one soliciting funds? Mr. Scrooge? Yes, that is right. And uh, Merry Christmas to you? Well, uh, uh, yes, uh, to you, yes. I have something I wish to ask you. Uh, will you have the goodness to, uh, well, here, let me, let me whisper it. Lord, bless me, my dear Mr. Scrooge. Are you serious? If you please, and not a farthing less. A great many back payments are included in it, I assure you. There is more in life than money. There is to that, sir. A wise thought that is. Yes. The person who uttered it to me is very wise. Very wise. My dear sir, I, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, please. Just come and see me, will you? Oh, I will indeed, <laughs> Mr. Scrooge. I am much obliged to you. Much obliged and bless you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Scrooge walked the streets and watched the people and patted children on the head and passed on coins to beggars and found that everything could yield him pleasure. He had never dreamed that any walk, that anything could give him so much happiness. In the afternoon, he turned his steps toward his nephew's house. Uh, hello, uh, I am here to see my nephew. Uh, might he be, oh, oh I, I see him now, thank you. Uh, Fred! Why, bless my soul, is that? <laughs> it is I, your Uncle Scrooge. My uncle. <laughs> I have come to dinner. That is, if you will have me. If it is all right with you and your wife. Oh, right, of course it is. Oh, my dear, you will forgive me? There's nothing to forgive, uncle. Our home is your home. It was and it always will be. And a merry Christmas to you. And a merry, merry Christmas to you. My... My family. Look, everyone, my uncle is here. A Merry Christmas. <laughs> the next morning, Scrooge was early at his office. So very early. For he wanted to catch Bob Cratchit coming late. That was the thing he had set his heart upon the most. And he did it. There it was, a full 18 minutes past the hour. And finally, Bob arrived. Scrooge sat with his door wide open so he could see his clerk come in. Bob, his hat off before he even entered, took his seat and instantly went about his work as if nothing happened or was about to happen. One carried over, 20 plus 10, then... Cratchit! Uh, yes, sir. What do you mean by coming here at this time of day? 
I am very sorry, sir. I am behind my time. You are. Yes, I think you are. Step this way, if you please. It's only once a year, sir. It won't be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. And, and now I will tell you something, Bob Cratchit. I am not going to stand for this sort of thing any longer. Mr. Scrooge, sir. And therefore... Oh, please, sir. It's only once a year. And yes. therefore, Mr. Cratchit, I am going to raise your salary. But, Mr. Scrooge, sir, I... <laughs> I mean, did you say... <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did. I did indeed, Bob. <laughs> and no, 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 I have not lost my senses. I have only just regained them. Dear Bob, a very merry Christmas to you. A merrier Christmas, I hope, my good fellow, than I have given you for many a year. I'll raise your salary and endeavor to help your family if, if you will let me. And whatever I can do for Tiny Tim, Oh, sir. And we'll talk all about it this very afternoon over a holiday supper. <laughs> and Bob, Bob, make up the fires. And, and uh, you go out and buy another coal scuttle before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. <laughs> Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all, and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a man as the good old city knew, or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh, and little heeded them. His own heart laughed, and that was quite enough for him. Scrooge, in all his days, had no further intercourse with the spirits. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us, and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. <laughs>